this is your captain speaking. I will be flying at 35,000 feet. That's just a little hint of what's to come today on the program. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time. DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next event. You know I like to party with the people. The people need to be entertained. Are you not entertained? Let me entertain you. Make your next thing a big one. Today on the program, I got James Carpenter. Oh, yeah. If you've been listening to the What Makes You Famous podcast, you already know a little bit about James Carpenter. You pro- you actually know a lot about James Carpenter, his history and what's going on. We're going to catch up with James Carpenter and find out more about what's happening now. <laughs> this week's shows, I have two, count them, two public shows this week. My regular uh, Friday night gig at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, the video dance party karaoke jam almost every Friday night of the year, that's where you'll find me. You know, if anybody had a plot to kidnap old Keys Dan, uh, they could go to the Rab on Friday nights and probably find me there. <laughs> it's kind of tough, you know. If, if they know that's where you're going to be, then, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully nobody k- tries to kidnap me and they just come out and have some fun. Video dance party karaoke jam. Come sing a song. Come dance with the people. They got a full bar, the kitchen's open, pool tables, pool tournament on Friday night. So if you want to try your hand at playing pool and possibly make some money while you're doing it, come on out to the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, 8 p.m. until 12:30 in the AM. Good times, good people, good food, good fun. Hey, have some drinks. <laughs> it's a good time. It really is. It really is. I'm very happy that they still let me be at the Rab on Friday nights. And then Saturday, Saturday, I will be at Spectators Bar and Grill, Spectators Grill and Pub in North Little Rock, real close to Sherwood, Arkansas. Now, I I did that last week, and I was covering for uh, DJ Ricky Z, Rick Zilke. Thank you so much for that, by the way. And uh, they liked it, and they're looking forward to having, uh, having me there next Saturday night. 8 p.m. until at least 12. I know I went till about 12:30, and that was that was pushing it a little bit. They they got to be closed up at one. So the later I go, <laughs> the 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 more people want to drag their feet on the way out the door. So I want to be mindful to the staff. You know, we got to be out the door by one, or else we're all going to jail. <laughs> No, but uh, no, it was a good time. Video dance party, karaoke jam. We had some great singers last week, and they said, "Oh, we're coming back, and we're bringing friends." So let's fill this, fill that place up. That's uh, Saturday night at Spectators Grill and Pub in North Little Rock, Arkansas, real close to Sherwood, Arkansas. Yeah. Oh, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Yeah. Good times. All right, that's enough intro. Let's get into it with James Carpenter. Uh, I got James Carpenter on Skype, so if you're listening to the audio version, I encourage you to check out the video version on my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Keys Dan. Skyping James Carpenter now. Okay. Wait, Wait, maybe I should do it this way. Okay, this is your captain speaking. We'll be flying at 3,500 feet, 35,000 feet. I, you know, oh. I, I, I probably shouldn't be doing that. It was James Carpenter. You're the traveling man. You're the one that travels, been around the world, and I, 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 I can't hey. find my baby. Yeah, you're, you're the guy that goes around the world or sends other people around the world. James Carpenter, uh-huh. good to see hey. you again, man. Hey, likewise, Dan, likewise, man. It's good to see you as well, always, man. You all super and cheerful and all that, man. I can't help it, man. It's just a contagious spirit that you got about you, which is good. 
<laughs> well, I mean, for people that are, are avid listeners of the What Makes You Famous podcast, they've seen your last podcast. They possibly heard your last podcast. And we talked a, lo- a lot about uh, you, the uh, the man from East Chicago, Indiana. You know, that's what's up. That's what's up. You know, and you've been uh, in, in the armed forces, <laughs> and that's where you you first found your love for for traveling. And uh, I mean, uh, you know, we're here to catch up, find out what's going on in the world of James Carpenter. What's happening now? Oh man! Uh, wow. Um, so I got some things planned. I got me a Hawaii trip planned for next January. So, uh, you know, everything goes well. Um, I'm already got that emotion, Dan. So that's a beautiful thing, man. That's one of my dream places. I, I, I used to call it my bucket list, but people told me that from the a law of attraction that to be keep it more positive. So it's my life list, you know, while I'm alive. So <laughs> um, Hawaii is on my life list for uh, January of next year. And uh, everything where I already paid, I think it's, I want to say it's Waikiki or something like that. So I put a deposit already down on part of my trip. And, hey, man, I'm looking forward to doing it. So, well, just uh, to, just to, my travel destination. James Carpenter, just to refresh memories, give the people an idea of who you are. Why are you the traveling man? Why are you James Carpenter Travel? Tell, tell the people what you do. All right. So what I do is I actually help people save up to 70 percent on travel destinations. You can find you can get trips as well as uh, you can get flights. Flights are not so much uh, discounted. So I wouldn't say I can't, you know, guarantee that. But you can get trips just like you go to any other place. You know, we got trips. We got art. We got uh, air Airbnb. We have uh, timeshares, condos, all kind of travel destinations throughout the world, hotels, and you can get discounts. So my company is actually looking for it. Matter of fact, what we're going to be doing is we offer some uh, you international, national, whatever the case is, and we're actually offering um, discounts for groups and things like that, groups of six or more or 12 or more, depending on what the destination is. So, And some a little bit more, depending on. If it's something local, 20 or more, you get a group discount. So if you want to travel anywhere in the United States, out of the United States, listen, I can help you get a discount if you like it. One thing about us, we have a 10% or what they call a 110% guarantee. So if you find something, we price match, that's 100%. And if you find something cheaper, we give you an extra 10% for just finding something uh, that you found something cheaper within a certain period of time of, of traveling with us. So, I mean, we, you know, if you find something cheap, you find something cheaper, but we like to price match it and give you something for your troubles. And if you, we want your business. So, uh, you know, if you are going anywhere, if you like to travel, whether it be local, whether you do you want a vacation or just a staycation, come and check out and holler at your man, James company travel, man. That's <laughs> a, that's a lofty guarantee to give, uh, to give that, uh, that boast that you could uh, get somebody the best deal. I, what you're trying to say is that you're, you know, what, if I'm getting it right, is that give you a chance, you know, before you've seen the, all the other people, you, there's a lots of, of places online that may uh, advertise more that may quote unquote be bigger. Uh, you know, maybe they advertise uh, on television or, or on radio, but uh, you have the insides, you have the inside scoops and you could do, pretty much what the big guys can do or what the uh what the other people that advertise can do i i can't say you're not a big guy because if you're getting people into into um uh a vacations which uh people need to do you can't work all the time but uh you, you know you need to have a vacation give uh-huh. james carpenter a chance to get you the good price for the good vacation now okay you've been you've been around uh you know all over this the this well, parts of this planet, but, um, I mean, you, most of that was, uh, in the armed forces or have you been, uh, traveling uh, outside of that? So, so most of that was traveling in the armed forces, you know, um, a lot of that was my days, uh, uh, pre marital days and pre children. So, uh, before I had children, before I got married, you know, I, I was able to go to a lot of places, Italy, I've been to Rome, you know, I've been to Belgium, 
I've been to uh, uh, I've been to Spain. I've been to a lot of places. Um, so you know, before you know, so I enjoy the world. And, and once you get a chance to to see the beautiful earth and be- beautiful cultures, and, I mean, I think it's an addiction. Actually, to me, it's like a a good travel addiction. Like you want to go see more because once you discover, man, this the beautiful cultures out there. That's just one or, or a couple out of many thousands of, of places to enjoy. So I'm looking forward to just seeing some of the other places that God created in the world for us to enjoy. You know what I'm saying, Dan? Yeah, there could be worse things to be addicted to. That's for sure. I mean, addicted to travel, it, it may or may not be more expensive than I- illicit drugs, you know, or, or even, you know, going out. Uh, you know, you, a lot of people have addiction to uh, cakes and pies and candies and drinks and maybe you know like I just said maybe some drugs but if you save all that money you might be able to get a, a good trip now you you said you've been all over Europe you know with with your days in the armed forces but now you're saving up and you're are you teaching people how to save and how to uh how to make uh you know their, their plans to make a trip cuz you you're going to Waikiki. I'm not even sure which island that is. I, I'm I, I I do admire the the Hawaiian Islands. I've never been there, but it, it yeah. is something some place that I'd like to go. I'd like to see the volcanoes. I'd like to see the ocean from that side. It's a pretty m- remote set of islands. But Waikiki is that on the on the Big Island of Hawaii or Oahu? I've heard good things about several different islands. What, what, which one are you traveling to? So that's a good question. I was, I, I had it mixed up then myself. I thought it was, was uh, Wahoo because somebody mentioned that to me and I believe that's what it is. And so I said, I guess somebody corrected me who came from Hawaii. And so I think it's a Wahoo. So either which way I know I'm going <laughs> and I will look up the details later, but, uh, I know I'm just looking forward to having fun, Dan. I'm looking forward to it. But I'll find out the details. I'll be glad to share my trip. Matter of fact, when I'm going there, you know, there's uh, if anybody want to come along, you know, we still got some time, you know, because I'm actually able to uh, take up to four people with me right now. Uh, so myself and up to up to four people, uh, we can, you know, uh, a six man room or a five man room, four man room or whatever the case may be. Uh, so. There's there's room, you know, travel buddies out there. Somebody want to go in. We can split some expenses and we can have some fun, have an experience. I think I only have one person that might be uh, sharing that time with me. So other than that, hey, uh, if you want to jump on, hey, I'm open. (laughs) Man, that sounds real smart. The more the merrier. I mean, most of the time you're using your hotel room just to throw your stuff in. And then you go off and, and, you know, explore the, the sites and see what's what's going on around. You don't really need a to have a, a, a big hotel room for yourself. You can share it with other people. Uh, you said you you do bed and breakfasts, uh, B and Bs. I guess is that is that uh, deals that you can find with Airbnb or deals that you can find with hotels and maybe rental cars. Uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, so rental car deals is definitely something that's on our site. You can find hotels. You can find rental cars. You can find uh, Airbnbs. You can find uh, different private home staycations. And actually, I have different people that have networked with me. So if you're going to a place like uh, like the Keys, for example, if you're going to a place like the Bahamas, I actually have some pilots from Emory Riddle or one in, in mind that actually can fly you there, you know, for a certain amount per hour they'll fly you there and 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 let you enjoy yourself and and fly you back or whatever come back and get you and or or if you just want to take a day trip you know so there's uh there's just opportunities out there whatever whatever you need to do whatever you need done it can happen we can make it happen one way yeah you know what's funny i'm from the florida keys and and i used to know a a a policeman down there that had his own cessna uh, you know like a, a single prop uh, two seater, no, four seater, uh, Cessna. And he would take people on day trips. And thankfully, you know, because we were buddies, he needed to, to, uh, I don't know, get some hours or, or get the plane worked out. Now I, I, you know, uh, I think the funniest part was he, he, he was duct taping the propeller 
but uh <laughs> that, that, it was kind of uh funny to me but uh we went up and and he gave me a a flight and a little taste of what a private plane can do a lot of people th- think oh a private jet that's going to be really expensive but you know a private prop plane that's just going to get you like a a puddle jump like if you do head for oahu and you want to go explore some of the other islands you can either go there by boat which is a little slower, but I'm sure that they have, you know, two or four seater planes or maybe even helicopters that'll take you to the different islands. Uh, have you explored any of that? Or, I mean, is there enough to see in the, on the one Island that you're going to be on? Well, one of the things I wanted to do, uh, Dan, that's, I'm glad you mentioned that I am, um, I was looking and I, I saw a lot on the Island and there's other islands surround. So one of the things I wanted to do was explore other islands. And definitely, if I had other people sharing the cost, we can go and jump on one of those those planes and kind of cut down and minimize the cost and fill up a flight. And then uh, also, I wanted to get us a tour guide, you know, and, and take us around to some places. So for uh, not too much, it's a small amount. We can throw in and get a tour guide, and they can take us to the the hot spot so we can you know we can miss we can get those opportunities that we would have missed you know by being novice in in the hawaii area so you know there's certain places they say you got to go see this and you got to go see that and uh you know the islands are are fairly small but at the same time i want to go to the spots you know <laughs> well and that's what a tour guide will do somebody that's local will help you out you know they because uh, they know you a howley howley boy you know, I, and I think that's what they call the, the people that are outsiders that are not uh, Hawaiian born or Hawaiian native. They call them howlies. I don't even know if that's still a thing or if that's too derogatory. Maybe there's, it's not PC. Somebody who's Hawaiian is going to be getting on this thing and telling me and writing me a letter. Hey, you can't say howly anymore, especially if you're not yeah. Hawaiian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but hey, I, much, love. much love to the Hawaiians. I'm telling you. <laughs> forward to coming over there I, hey, we're gonna have a good time oh for sure aloha's and ma- mahalo's uh, aloha is hello and goodbye and mahalo is uh, much love you got to learn that uh you know if you're going o- over to a uh, uh, different place i know it's america i know it's part of america but it has culture it has a, a lot of of uh things that that you see in movies and you go I want to go to there. I want to check that out. I want to find out. I want to put my toes in that sand that's volcanic, that black sand. I want to put, you know, put my feet on those uh, on those interesting landscapes that you see in the movies or mm-hmm. or even on uh, I guess I was a fan of Magnum PI growing up. And uh, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of Hawaii in there. Now I <laughs> that's the other thing is how do you say Hawaii? I asked a man one time, hey, uh, do you say Hawaii with the W sound or Hawaii with the V sound? And he said, <laughs> Hawaii with the V sound. And I said, thank you. And he said, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's kind they of got a- the accents and stuff over there, uh, Dan, just like in the United States, the Southern culture, the Northern cultures. You know, well, just like, uh, you know, you go New York. New York got their own languages. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in Chicago, everybody has their dialects and their languages. And, and we pronounce different things a different way. You know, tomato, tomato, whatever the case may be. You know, uh, it is what it is, you know. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be, before we go, I'm going to be grabbing a little culture guide to, to learn a little bit about maybe some languages. I'm going to take, you know, a, a couple of weeks so I can be able to pronounce a few words, you know, and have a, a little small conversation with the people. Let them know I'm trying to reach out to you, you know, since I'm going out to there. And, you know, I think it's just going to be a more welcoming experience, you know, me going over there and I'm trying to learn the language. I think they could appreciate he took the time to learn a little bit about our culture and, and to learn the language. So, you know, just what you said, Hawaii, Hawaii. <laughs> well, James Carpenter, you've had to uh, travel around this planet, you know, with the uh, armed services, and, um, and and thank you for that, of course. But uh, when you traveled, did you take the time 
to learn the cultures that you were going to? Did you did you learn any other languages or like when I was in the Florida Keys, when I when I lived in the in Miami, the Florida Keys, it's a big tourist town, a lot of tourists. So I had to learn how to say hello, you know, hello and goodbye in several different languages, but not much more. I really didn't take the time. Well, I know Spanish, you know, because of, uh, you know, being in Miami and, of course, you know, being half Cuban. But, uh, you know, did you take the time to learn the languages when you were over in Europe? Uh, yes, I actually learned a little bit of German. And uh, so, guten Tag, good morning, guten Nacht, good night, you know, Alvita saying, I'll see you later. Um, you know, I'm going to the Bonhoeff. You know, I go up to the Bonhoeff, which is the bus station, because that's how we transfer over there. And, you know, uh, and, and so basically, instead of asking somebody, uh, where are you going? It, it would say, where, where goes down? You know, where goes down? You know, it's kind of like a, um, it's a diff different, uh, I guess the way to put the words is, is it was kind of, well, like, very, it sounds weird, but hey, it is what is culture. And, you know, I learned that choose means I'll see you later. Uh, you know, so I, I learned some different languages and learned some different words. And, hey, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I took the time and it was great connecting with the people. I met people from all different cultures over there. And they really appreciate it when you take the time to, to learn the language and try to try to communicate. Even if you jack up the words, you, you made an effort. You know what I'm saying? Because even in the English language, I'm growing up in the English language, we still pronounce English words wrong, you know. So, but for us to come over to their culture and learn some of their language, you know, and your name, you know, if somebody asks you what your name, you would say, my nama is Hair Carpenter, or my nama is Hair Dan, or, you know, you know, Hair means, you know, man, Mr. or man, you know, and Hair Wren is, is, is a female. So, you know, it was, you know, Dama is, is female. You know? So it's, it's, it's awesome. It's, it just, I, I had a whole bunch of words I used to know pretty more fluently, but, you know, but it was, it was great. It was great. Even when I was jacking it up, I had me a little book and uh, I would go say the words and I would practice uh, asking directions from people and they would try to point me in the right direction. And it was good. You know, it was good. Sometimes I had to read their lips. To kind of <laughs> like I was deaf to kind of say, okay, what did this don't look at my book, you know? But it was just a great experience, man. So for anybody who wanted to go out there, I mean, listen, you have nothing to lose but everything to gain. I mean, even friendships. I have friendships and people that today I can pick up the phone and call them because I reached out and I will embrace their culture. That is good advice, James Carpenter. It sounds like you're going to get a much better experience if you learn some of the culture. Take the time to get one of these travel books. They have them available at your local library. And, you know, if you if you want to go down there and, and pick up a travel book and find out about the place that you're going to, there's some places that it's dangerous if you don't know the culture. If you uh, give a, a peace sign to somebody in the wrong culture, they might take it as an insult, you know, or, or you get, you know, you give a thumbs up. Oh man, they're, you might get in trouble. You might uh, get thrown in a, in a, in a, in a jail, you know, maybe not that quite, quite that harsh, but somebody's going to, going to get upset. So it take, take some time to learn the culture. Now me. All right. My mom uh, used to work for an airlines. My stepdad also worked for an airlines. I did get a chance to travel quite a bit by air when I was a young lad growing up. But since I got out of the house, I don't really travel by air too much. I do a lot of car traveling. What, what kind of advice? And, and I even wore, I wore my, uh, route 66, uh, car shirt, you know, <laughs> because I knew I was going to be talking to the traveling man. I know I'm sitting in the cockpit of some kind of an airplane. I don't know what kind of an airplane it is. We're flying above the clouds. If you look at the, uh, the, the, the background of the video version of this. If you're listening to the audio, it's not going to make any sense at all. So check out the video version and you can see James Carpenter right there next to me. But, uh, you know, I, I travel in cars a lot. What, what kind of advice do you have for people that are traveling in cars? Maybe wanting to go, you know, maybe even to one location or taking a trip 
maybe across country and wanting to visit different spots. What kind of advice do you have for them there? So, so really, uh, if, you, if you're going to be traveling by car, and I, as a matter of fact, I know a couple people that, that like to do that, some people that's retired that I admire, and they, and they do that. So one of the things is definitely uh, finding, you know, finding spots that actually before you go on your trip, different towns have like on the weekends, especially depending on when you're traveling, they have a lot of different cultural things that you can go on local. Like uh, if you go to Savannah, Georgia, for example, you know, they might have some art shows. They might have some different things that's going on on the weekend. They may have some hero ceremonies that honor veterans. They have different shows and different events. Um, and, and you you know, find out what's going on before you go. So you travel them by car. Instead of just stopping in that town and this is just going to be a resting spot, Gather the whole experience, you know, take some time to do some research. For example, over here in Daytona, if you come in this way, where I'm at, you know, we had uh, we just had a volleyball tournament. We got college volleyball tournament. Uh, some people like college volleyball. You know, we had before that we had Jeep week, you know, a whole bunch of Jeeps all over the place. You know, before that, you know, we had an event, we had, you know, a bike week tournament. And, you know, coming up this week, we have a Rockville concert. So anybody that's in the Rock, you can come to the Rockville concert this weekend. It's going to be taking place, you know, in the next four days. You know, uh, matter of fact, actually, it starts tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, so, you know, and then after that, we got a Heroes Retreat, you know, for Vietnam veterans. You know, Vietnam veterans are going to be honored. Uh, Ke- uh, Toby Keith is going to be uh, singing here on uh, the 28th. And so, you know, and I'm just using this as an example to find out what is going on. Go online and look at local events in that area so that you can get the best experience when you're traveling that's out there. You know, you're going out there, you're doing a budget wise, you know, also, you know, you want to do a budget. You you look at, look at different hotels, certain hotels that are not more popular. Say if you're going to stop and you're going to stay in the hotel or resting spot, there are certain hotels that they actually – do last minute and they get last minute deals or, you know, uh, you know, some of the smaller hotel or some of the larger hotels that may, they don't fill up the rooms. They might give you a little discount just because they need to fill up the rooms, you know, <laughs> excuse me, Dan. All right. <laughs> no problem, uh, James. But, um, but yeah, there, there's opportunities out there. So really it's about doing your research and everything. One thing I, you know, and, 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 and you know, also, you know, you might need to learn different cultures with different people. And, and there might be, matter of fact, we have an Iranian day. You know, we had Iranians and they're celebrating the Iranian culture. They have a Greek festivals and things like that. I mean, they're all over the place. So depending on where you're going, it's a lot of things to do. You know, if if you want to get involved, you want to make the enhance your experience, do a little research before you go and find out what you, you know, what you really want to do or what's involved. Instead of just making it a trip, we travel, we're tired, we're going to go to the hotel, we're going to eat and go to sleep. No, enjoy it while you're there. Take your time if you have that leisure, you know, get the best experience that you can. Well, James Carpenter, sounds like you're giving people uh, gems there. It, traveling is not just traveling around the world, traveling long, long distances. Uh, traveling is also in your own backyard. There's things to see where you are. Uh, you know, don't discount all the things. I mean, my, my goodness, we're we're fortunate enough to, to be living here in, in America. I, 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 you know, there's so much to see in this lo- this broad country of ours. And you've seen quite a bit of it. you you know, from being born in the, in the Midwest and then going down South to Texas and then out to uh, ultimately to Daytona, uh, just in this country alone. I mean, uh, people in Florida, I mean, people in other parts of this, of the country and all the other parts of the world think that, when you go to Florida, everything's near the ocean and certainly Day- Daytona is near the ocean, but I lived in Orlando for about, uh, about close to a year. And the only, the closest beach was Daytona about an hour away. So, I mean, what advice do you, uh, well, okay. I like taking day trips cause I don't have the, the luxury all the time to take a two day, three day trip, you know, but if you can go maybe, 12 hours that way six to 12 hours that way maybe go do a a nice function 
grab a, a you know a, a nice place to to go sleep and then come back and you know you get you gave people gems on say there's a festival in a small town uh the strawberry right. festival uh the, mm -hmm. the you know the the ball of twine that you could see over there you know stuff like that i mean what i mean i know gas prices are high right now but i mean you know let's expect things will level off you know people will start being able to afford gas and going around uh, at least driving around their their own you know backyards but uh what i mean what, what kind of what kind of trips what kind of day trips do you recommend you know, uh, so if you were, say, for example, out of Orlando, and matter of fact, uh, that's how I got connected with you, uh, Katrina Texador, Cost Marketing Agency. She is so awesome. She is great. And she is just like Miss Miss Marketer of Marketers. <laughs> Her and team are awesome. But, you know, people that stay in Orlando, and I have other people, you know, my god sister, Lazandra Randolph, she stays in, um, in Orlando, too. And, and the thing about it is a lot of people do come this way to go to the beach. So if you're going to come this way to go to the beach, like if I'm going the way to Orlando, a lot of times I plan my time out. So, so, so many of us are in a rush. And so number one, before you go out, you know, gas up your car and, and I'm, I'm just give you a little tip. I'm not, it's not set in stone, but if you're going to take a trip and just say you're going on the weekend, try to gas your car up on Thursday, you know, or when. Because as Friday, Saturday come around, the gas prices go up. And this is just a game of manipulation. So a lot of time, if you want to get a little cheaper gas, kind of been watching it, <laughs> you know, been watching how the prices fluctuate. A lot of times on the weekends, they just hike up the prices a little bit because they know this is when people are off and they have time to travel. And, you know, and, and for whatever reason, they can make a little more profits on the day. So, if you're going to, if you can, and try to gas up on Wednesday or Thursday, you know, because once Friday, Saturday comes around, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of late as far as you trying to get the best deals. Also, I, I go to gasbuddy.com. You, you know, that's a, a site you can look up, gasbuddy.com. You can just go on the site and then find out the best gas prices. And they can put it from lowest to highest. And if you're using premium, you know, like I use premium, Dan, I only get about 12 to 14 miles to the gallon. So, you know, I got a big hog, but I, I enjoy my big hog. <laughs> so I go there and find out the best gas prices. So right now in my area, for example, Bucky's is here. So Bucky's is the lowest gas prices, but Sam's and Bucky's are neck and neck when it comes to gas prices for, for 87. If you're using 87 and 89, they're the same. Once you start going to premium, then, you know, pretty much look, there's a little variance. It might be four cents uh, cheaper with Bucky's than it is with Sam. So, you know, I'm looking for the deal and they're right next to each other, pretty much across from each other. So I just go across the street and, and save an extra four cents. So look at gas, buddy. Look at the gas prices in the neighborhood. And I try to fill up your car. Like I say, uh, you know, do that if you can as much. And try to try to fill up your tank up on, on Wednesday or Thursday, and you you should save a little gas money. So if you're going, if you're in Orlando, I mean Daytona, great. I, I, I'm biased because I'm here, but uh, instead of going the highway route, go down. You know, you would go down 50, go down A1A. A1A is a scenic route on the left to the right side or the left side, of you, depending whether you're going north or south. Is water. You get a chance to see the ocean. You get a chance to travel and see water you know so i like taking the scenic route, taking my time you don't you know a lot of time you only be able to travel 35 miles an hour 45 you know there's some 55 miles an hour down the, the road but you know take your time and enjoy i mean this who doesn't like water well some people might not like it but who like the water it's peaceful it's serene uh you know take your time and go down the ocean route you know if you want to take a day trip there's people over here and in a lot of places there and, you know, you can get timeshare deals. You know, if you come down here and, and you want to do a little presentation, you know, you got the Spinnaker Resort. The Spinnaker Resort just called me yesterday. You got a couple or you go have a day or you're married, whatever the case is. They got some timeshare deals for you. You can go to go look at a timeshare deal and you can get a night for free, you know, <laughs> 
and that can save you some money. Yeah, you might have to spend, um, you know, you might have to spend 90 minutes of your time or an hour of your time. Some of the places actually provide you with a meal. Yeah, they're going to haggle you about trying to buy a timeshare, but you know what? The answer is no. <laughs> but I'm going to get this free meal. I'm going to get two or three days in this nice resort, and uh, I'm going to enjoy myself, you know. Yeah, I've got luxury swimming pools, nice facilities. You know, a lot of them have been cleanly, you know, have advanced their cleanliness because of COVID-19. They cleaning protocols are a little bit higher than what they were before. So they're real meticulous on sanitation and things like that. So you, you can make it. You can make it. some opportunities here. Matter of fact, the Holiday Inn is another spot. Now, this is what got me in. Holiday Inn, they have little um, timeshare deals, but you have to be married or you can be um, cohabitating, or you can be a single female. If you're a single male, no. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> a single female can go to this, but a single male, no. they, they have done studies that single females spend more money than single male. So they'll invite you. So if you're a female out there, some of these, these condos and presentations, they'll take you because they know you're more inclined to spend money. <laughs> James Carpenter, you're a fountain of information. You give people 25 cents worth of free advice with that gas, buddy. I'm sure you're not making any money off of that, but that's just that's just some free advice. That's just a bit, a sample of the knowledge that's in your head that's going to help people out on their traveling. Now, you're talking about uh, timeshares. Uh, my parents, uh, my mom and stepdad, had a, uh, a timeshare at the Hollywood Beach Hotel. Now, there's different star ratings of timeshares say mm -hmm. you you share time and that's it, it's pretty uh, pretty much like hotels or, or mm -hmm. things like that you buy a week uh, uh you know every year you buy a week maybe two two weeks a block of time in that place and mm -hmm. you pay it ahead of time for a discounted price now mm -hmm. say you don't want to uh go to that timeshare on the hollywood beach hotel you could trade with someone mm -hmm. who has an equal status or lesser yes. status. Say you want to go to Vail, Colorado, which is one place that I went with the, with the family or San Francisco or LA, you can trade time with people. Mm -hmm. Now this is, this is something that man, it, yes, you, to get that timeshare, they had to sit through. And I remember I was there too with my brother. <laughs> You know, they had to sit through and they, they put us, you know, they pretty, I think they sent us to the pool. I think I was old enough to, to be at the pool and kind of watch over my brother. Uh, but they had to, to be sitting in front of a, you know, some kind of meeting to uh, get the timeshare, but they found that it was, it was a, a, a value uh, that, that they, that they could, uh, they could live with, they could justify so we can get uh, more family vacations because, you know, that's a way to bring families together. I mean, for myself, I don't think I've been on a vacation in the longest time. The day trips, yeah, here and there. So most of the time uh, my day trips are to a wedding, you know, in another part of Arkansas. And I go, huh, all right, this is a cool mountain. This is nice. You know, do the yes, wedding sir. really for work, you know. But for you, uh, you know, for, for people that, that can afford to take some downtime and, Everyone should, and I know I should take my own advice. Everyone should take a little downtime. And you, uh, you already, you know, let the cat out of the bag. You work too hard, and you're you have to plan all the way to next January to get that mm -hmm. downtime. I mean, right? A any advice there? Yeah, well, de definitely. I mean, really, you know, some people are sporadic. You know, you got different personality types, and some people are just those sporadic types. Actually. They had a color chart, and I'm actually a blue, which is a person that likes to have fun. But you have a, a, a red personality color trait, which would be a straightforward type person that just get, get to the point. And you have the yellow, which are giving, sharing, you know, hospitality type people. And then you have green. It's all about the money, and I'm going to analyze everything down to the T. And so depending on, on, on what, you, what you are, you know, um, you know, I just I recommend, you know, take some time out and, and do something for yourself. I just I feel like everybody I don't care what personality type you deserve to be treated. Uh, and, you know, so many times, Dan, I spend so much time taking care of other people and looking out for other people. I forget about myself. 
And there are some people out there with great and generous hearts, and maybe you can relate to this. You know, you need to plan some time for yourself. You need to plan some me time. You can get so inundated with the cares and the affairs of this life, and then you find you're going around in the circle. I listen to a, a pastor. Matter of fact, my pastor is, uh, uh, you know, my pastor is from Elevate, is uh, Joseph Devino. And so he is, uh, you know, we, 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 we track different things. Like he, like it's the 20th week in the year. It's 52 weeks of the year. Well, I, today, I didn't know, you know, week 20, I guess week 20. Well, I'm like, well, what did I do with the other 19 weeks? You know, I spent a lot of time helping people. So now, you know, and then we usually have a message. Like we had a message last year. It's called, it was called halftime. It was talking about January, July 1st is halftime. Now you're going, you know, you at 30, 30 days in June and then July 1st, it, halftime is over with. Now you're going to the second half of the year. And so, you know, what are you doing with your time? A lot of time we're working. We're going in the same cycle over and over and over. So you need to take time to enjoy yourself, plan out some time for yourself or you won't get it. You're only going to get time a lot of times if you plan out. So, you know, even if you and like thing I've done is I've taken money, I put it in an envelope, and I put so much money away a week. I start off with $5. Then the next week I start off with $10. Then the next week I go to $20. Then the next week I go to $40. Then the next week I, I, I go to $80. And if I don't make $80, I go to $60. I, I keep on going up and up and up. And by the end of the year, you know, I got some money in my account. You know, that's one thing. Another thing I did when I went to Las Vegas is I uh, started a Christmas club account. A Christmas club account, you know, people say, well, that's for children. No, you put money into a Christmas club account. They're going to penalize you if you take that money out. But you put $10 in there a week, $20 in there a week, whatever you can afford, you throw that money in there. And then at Christmas, they cut you a check for what's in your Christmas club account. So if you plan this out and you hide it from yourself, you don't even think about it, you know? So I'm just saying, but if it's accessible to you, if in a drawer, if it's under your mattress, if it's, you know, whatever the case is, in your car, underneath the mat, you know, you're going to spend it, you know, sometimes. So this is way you can, you know, you can plan a trip because you deserve to be treated like royalty. And a vacation is a memory, a, a lasting memory for you, you know. So that's, I'm just, I advise anybody, just, just some time, plan some time out, give yourself some me time. So many people are stressed out, even during the pandemic. It's so much negativity that's going on out there. And I tell you what, you know what? Uh, just take some time out because life is too short. I just heard of somebody passing away um, yesterday. As uh, a matter of fact, today I just heard about a young gentleman, 53 years old. You know, uh, I mean, you know, life is short. You know, life is short. And, you know, and when I look at it, I mean, it could be any one of us. So, you know what? And, you know, you got to take some time out, enjoy the day because you don't know tomorrow is not promised. But plan yourself, plan some time for yourself, treat yourself, deserve, pamper yourself, do what you can, why you can. Because one day you may not be able to get around. You may be able to travel. You know, we're going to get old one day and we're gonna, we may not be as mobile as we can. So while you can, you can say, man, I enjoyed this time with me, my family, my friends, my loved ones. And those memories will never ever ever go away you always got the memory even when you're broke you still got the memory well yeah. james carpenter sounds like you have uh you getting some good words from your pastor and that's fantastic that you get you gave him a shout out i i like that you give shout outs to people that have helped you along the way you gave a shout out to katrina that's also helping you out as well but my goodness you know you give people gems and and yeah once we get out of our our childhood which could go all the way into your 20s sometimes. Uh, once you start a family, then you become a husband and a father, and you start to get responsibilities. So it gets harder to break in, break away. Maybe maybe I was a blue who goes around and, and travels and does things, but I, I think over the years I've had to become a green out of necessity uh, to make sure that I provide for my family. You know, I, I, I work hard. Maybe my downtime is this. You know, getting to learn from people like you, James Carpenter, getting to learn, you know, some tips, some tricks. I, you know, I think when I was a kid, I came into a, a little bit of money because of a, a motorcycle wreck, and I took some of that money and I put it into a security fund. But then I, 
I lost the security book because I was a stupid kid. So I don't know. There's money out there in my name that uh, I don't know where it's at. But, uh, you know, but you, 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 I think you hit the nail on the head, saving a little bit every week, uh, $20 here, $20 there. It adds up. Even if it takes two years, three years, four years, five years to get that dream vacation, you're going to get it. That's smart. right. Very smart. I mean, but, uh, you know, what, other than t- taking the trip to Hawaii, you know, you being in Daytona, my goodness, that's a party town. There's always something to do. Uh, you got all kinds of events. It's not just uh, uh, Daytona 500, and it's not just bike week. I know that they have a huge bike week. So if you're into cars or motorcycles, there's always something to see there. Different kinds of people walking around, motorcycle clubs. Uh, I, I, I think uh, – I, I had some friends in, in two different clubs and I wasn't because I was friends with the guy in that club. I wasn't allowed to be the friend with the guy in that club. <laughs> Daytona is kind of funny, isn't it? Uh, motorcycle clubs are kind of funny. <laughs> it definitely is, Dan. I, I matter of fact, I met some people from a bike club on, uh, I want to say was it Easter around that, that day. And, uh, man, they're awesome group of guys. A lot of them were, were and so I got a chance to connect with them. And uh, we're going to, every Friday, they get together and they have like a little get together and little music. And they just, they just enjoy the moments, you know. And you don't really have to ride bicycles. You just come in and they enjoy the memories. A lot of these guys are in their 50s and 60s. And, you know, they're just enjoying life, you know. And I was like, you know, everything's peaceful. Uh, the police comes by every now and then. But they, 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 they'll put their hand up at the police. We got this. And I mean, so you don't have a lot of jitterbugs around there keeping chaos. If anybody is, is in a controversy or conflict, they'll actually say, hey, guys, we need to talk this out like grown people. And I, I like it. So it's a lot of lot of things going on, like you said. And I'm starting to connect with a lot of people. And, you know, I don't know if I mentioned to you last time, I'm a supervisor at the, uh, the Daytona International Speedway. Um, yeah, I got promoted to supervise. I was out there working. Uh, as a crew lead, I got promoted to a supervisor. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm actually setting up tours for people who want to go out and take a tour at the Daytona National Speedway. Matter of fact, the Girl Scout are talking about uh, having a having coming out, and I've set a tour up that I set a tour up with my church members, and uh, you know, and if anybody else want to set up, I, you know, I can I can work with you. I can see what kind of discounts I can get, and. You know, I know some people, and we try to help you out as best we can because, you know, that once again, that's a great event out there. In January, Dan, I'm going to tell you what. There was an event that happened. It was a go-kart race. Now, when you think of go-karts, yes, because what what the Speedway is doing right now is trying to integrate a lot of family events. So now the go-kart races, I expected a lot of five, six, seven-year-olds, you know, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There was guys there 60 years old racing go-karts, and they said, I love this. I love this. And so I didn't realize but it happens. It's an annual thing. And there was guys that say, man, this is just the highlight of their year. So it's, it's family-oriented. There's a lot of events going on. In July, there's going to be a soccer tournament. The people from Orlando, um, the soccer team out of Orlando is supposed to play in some other people. Uh, last year there was an M- MMA tournament, you know, and, and you know an MMA fight there, and they're just doing a lot of family events and things to bring the community out. So yeah, it's awesome, man. It's it's just awesome being here. It's, it's so it's been keeping me busy. It's been keeping me busy. I've been networking with a lot of people. Matter of fact, Michael McTaw uh, from Steadfast Group Homes. Uh, I networked with him and partnered with him. He's the CEO of Steadfast Group Homes. Shouts out to him. That brother is doing it helping veterans get off the street. And uh, so now we go out and we reach out. We try to feed veterans. We see veterans and um, if we can help them. Some of them have PTSD, but if we can help them, we try to help them, help them get their benefits. We try to help feed them. We try to help them get mental health counseling and try to help them get in the house and just showing love. And uh, so I'm, I'm busy right here. Dan. I want to be, I wish to be a thousand places, but you know, Daytona is keeping me pretty busy. 
Well, you're a hardworking man, James Carpenter. I understand about keeping busy and staying home. I, you know, I, I appreciate my downtime with my family. You know, a lot of times it's uh, maybe it's a shopping trip. You know, maybe it's sitting on the couch watching watching uh, a television and, uh, you know, holding hands with, with my, my lovely wife. But, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that downtime. But maybe some of my downtime is, is this, talking to people and learning from people. And, and some of my downtime is my, is my uh, DJ job to where I get to go be with people at their best times, you know, when they're having fun. So, you, you know, you could have downtimes in your head. But, yeah, it'd be nice to go take a trip, you know, with the family. I, I think, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I do have a trip that's kind of uh, – in the works, it's penciled in uh, for September, where I'm going to go visit with my mom in her in her new yep. place in uh, in Nashville or just south of Nashville. They're building a house there, and uh, I'm going to take a family trip out there, drive out, and you know maybe I'll take some of these uh, these ideas that you're giving me and and fill up my tank on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Make sure I do it at the beginning of the week because the weekends maybe they will jack it up. You know one one penny two pennies and those pennies do add up they do but uh okay. you, you're giving me gems you know but uh yeah I, I i i remember orlando i remember the bikes i remember the 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 raceway you know i used to live real close to homestead miami speedway and i was working on the radio down there and uh uh we got involved with the homestead miami speedway where i got to interview a lot of the drivers this is back uh early 2000s and it was just a lot of fun. You've yeah. you've got a a heck of a job. The the sound of the of the uh, of the cars and the yep. you know the the people yep. that come to see those. Uh, it's all walks of life. You know, a lot of people think it, it's rednecks waving flags or whatever. Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, that's part of it. But uh, yeah. there's other you know all kinds of different people that are watching NASCAR because it's it's big machines. You know. Like the cars on my shirt right here, Route sixty six. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's a Camaro right there. That's you know, what's up. <laughs> muscle cars, you know. But uh, you know, these are cars that are making noise. Oh my goodness, I, I I'm starting to get jealous of your job, man. You get to hang out at NASCAR amongst other things, but then you have the other job. You know, yeah, you're a dad. Uh, you know, you're a husband and, and a and a dad who's got responsibilities. So you're working hard, man, and, and you're helping people to play hard, you know, to get their downtime. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dan, I'll tell you what, you mentioned that, um, I missed a, a great opportunity. Uh, one of the guys, I want to say his name was, um, Wayne, but it, it might've got it wrong. He was an Asian guy and him at the Daytona international speedway. He told me, Hey James, why don't you want to come out and hang out with me after you get off of work and this and that. Like, and now I'm gonna get off late. I'm kind of tired and this and that. But well, anyway, come to find out, this guy is loaded with money. And and not to not to be funny, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. But I mean, you know, I've 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 ran across a couple millionaires, Dan. And I was like, wow, you never know because I believe this. It only takes one person to change your life. It only takes one person that can actually help set you out into a change your status. You know, somebody could be a blessing to you. Uh, that just just out of the blue, but you know this guy was like, man, yeah, I've been spending, and and I saw him with bags and bags and bags. He said he had been in Daytona for two weeks, and um, he said I spent thirty thousand dollars, and he says I don't even know what I did with it. I don't really have nothing to show for it. And I was like, wow. And so anyway, I found out that after the fact, I was like, we should have been hanging out. I could have helped you. <laughs> I got some bills that, you know, you can take <laughs> some of that 30 and we can put it towards something constructive, you know. But, I mean, I meet all kind of people. I mean, you know, some millionaires, some, you know, great uh, thousandaires, whatever the case may be. And they're just they're great people. They're generous. They, they like to have a good time. They're down to earth. And, you know, and, uh, man, just meeting these people, the excitement. When people come to the Speedway or people come here, they are not down and out. They're not war is me type people. They're not having pity parties. They want to enjoy life. When they come in, and some people that's the first time people having uh, visited the Daytona and now Speedway for the first time, I look in their eyes and they're like, wow. You know? 
And so I could say, like, this is your first time, huh? They was like, yeah, and they're taking selfies and photos. I helped them take the selfies with their friends and family, and it's just awesome. So it's a great experience. I mean, this is, you know, just I love meeting people, Dan. And me meeting people and seeing people happy, it makes me happy. You know, it just makes me happy. It's like a, that's, that's an, ad, an addiction, too. It's like a high. It's an experience that you just enjoy. You know, I, I can't get enough of it. Well, James Carpenter, it sounds like you're in the right business and the right place in the right business is, I mean, not only you meet people on at the racetrack, you meet people uh, trying to help them get the good vacations. I mean, uh, you, I mean, do you deal with everything, uh, planes, trains, automobiles, uh, you know, would you, would you take a bus ride? Would you, are you able to uh, set people up on, on different types of transportation? Some people don't like to fly. Mr. T didn't like to fly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, when you were talking about the, the spending too much money and not having any anything to show for it, I thought about Richard Pryor in Brewster's Millions. What a great movie. I mean, that, I think he had $30 million, and he couldn't show anything uh, from it. He, spent, he had to spend it all on worthless things, and he ended up, well, I'm not going to spoil it. Even though it's like a uh, 30, 40-year-old movie, I'm not spoiling it. <laughs> that's right, Dad. Oh. That's, that's right. But, uh, you know, yeah, I was going to say this, you know, and, and, and you're right. Um, so one thing and I'm going to say, ironically, uh, Pat Devolo from Fort Lauder- Lauderdale, Florida, he, he, he called me today, he just came back from Cancun. He's a part of an uh, organization I'm connected with, and uh, he's a good mentor of mine as well. He just he just talked to me, Dan, about um, uh, another opportunity, training in stocks, some stock training. There's people, I guess, that are making a thousand dollars a week, a thousand dollars a day, and so I'm going to be looking into this further because what he, what he's involved in, in in the travel industry as well. He says if we can help people make money, then they can take more trips. You know, and I said that makes sense. <laughs> so we have instructors that teach people so to give them an avenue to possibly increase their income, and if you increase your income the more likely you are to take some of that income that has been increased and take a trip. I say, that's genius. I like it. <laughs> so, I'm, you know, I'm looking to network with some people because on the side, I've looked at the increase my income. Last month, I made um, only $800. I made $900 in crypto. I lost 100 because I waited too long to take it out. But, you know, I'm looking at avenues that I can help people to increase their income as well. And if we can help you increase your income, not that I'm a guru, but I'm connected with some gurus, then why not take a trip? Now, we, now the, the fact of I don't have any money and I'm broke, you may be broke today, but give it some time and we can see how you can get you out of the broke zone. <laughs> well, I mean, you, just the fact that you said crypto and you were messing with crypto and you made a, a, a 800 bucks off of it, that's fantastic. I mean, it, people that think about the New York Stock Exchange or any stock exchange, really, it, it's non-existent. Anything you saw in the movies where the guy is saying, sell, buy, sell, buy, that's non-existent anymore. You better get yourself a good computer or somebody who has a good computer because millions of and millions of dollars are bought and sold in milliseconds. Yeah. Milliseconds. That's right. That's you right. know, they're, the computers, they used to be, all right, if, you, if your computer was in Denver and my computer was in New Jersey, I had a better advantage because my, the, the distance between my computer and the New York Stock Exchange and Denver's computer and the New York Stock Exchange made that much difference even though electricity moves at the speed of light now all the computers from the major investment co- companies are in the building of the stock exchange that used to be people's offices and i'm sure there's still offices here and there but now it's all computers linked up to the main computer at the stock exchange buying right. and selling it's it's crazy it's there's no real people that are you know with little papers uh how much how much uh ten thousand uh five uh two two hundred uh five you know nobody's doing that anymore it's all computers crazy mm. yeah. 
right. That's right. That's right. And that's why you got to know the tips. Matter of fact, some of the, you know, some of the best times to trade, you know, getting up and trading four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. You know, uh, some of the times to trade your crypto off, you know, two or two to three a.m., you know, uh, try to do it on a Saturday or Sunday. A lot of times to research this stuff. And so it's, it's ways out there with avenues where you can save money. And if we want to, you know, technology is here, Dan. It's here to stay. Some people are anti-technology and they, they think it's too much and it's going overboard. But technology is here to stay. So you might as well get with the program, educate yourself so that you can you can benefit from the technology that we have available. You can make money in the comfort of your own home. You know, just like you can set up trips from the comfort of your own home. You can do what you need to do from the comfort of your own home. So, you know, the computer industry, the technology is here. You know, we need to embrace this technology. You don't have to let it control you. You don't have to go overboard with it when you get addicted to it. But educate yourself and learn from it, and then you can reap some of the benefits that the industry has to offer. Well, that's a trip in itself. I think I've just taken a trip in my own mind and it got blown away. <laughs> you know, I think, I think that's all the free advice that we're going to get from you on this edition of What Makes You Famous. Any other advice? I, I, I want them to go uh, to your website, jamescarpentertravel.com. Uh, check you out on your Facebook at uh, James Carpenter. You're, you got a LinkedIn, you got se- several places to find you, and, and I want them to, to uh, pick your brain and get that advice from you on traveling, on making money, and even, you know, how to be a NASCAR driver. I remember one time at, at the Homestead Miami Speedway, they let us drive our own cars. I had a, a Dodge minivan, and I was driving it around the Homestead Miami Speedway, and, you know, because it was like family day or something like that. Hey, come on over and drive your own car around the Speedway. Kind of like what you're saying with the, the go-karts. That, they're, they're no joke. My, uh, my brother, he's... He's kind of crazy, but he had my uh, my nephew driving those carts, and you think that they're they're uh, you know go karts that you go uh, rent at the video arcade or the putt putt golf, and then they got go karts. No, no, no. These guys are serious. They are serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that's true. <laughs> that's, that's not a lawnmower engine on there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken a bunch of your time. I, I want you to come back as time progresses. This has been a complete pleasure chit-chatting with you and catching up. But, uh, you know, if you have any shout-outs to give, uh, I know you have uh, already given quite a few. If you want have any final thoughts, uh, you know, give some last words for the people. But uh, start off with some shout-outs uh, if you have any others to give. And uh, then we'll just wrap this thing up with last words for the people, James Carpenter. <laughs> All right, shout outs to Lizandra Randolph, my god sister. Uh, Crystal Johnson out of Las Vegas, my favorite cousin. She is so awesome to me. You know, my son, Jabari Carpenter, my daughter, Zoe Carpenter, which is in college right now. Both of them are doing great, and I'm definitely proud to be their father, you know. Um, so they make me proud, and they're more, they're doing better than I did at their age and more focused. So, um, you know, and every, it's just a lot of Cheryl. You know, Cheryl Smith, uh, I mean, wow. It's just so many people out there. Man, it's just so many people. I could name so many people. But anyway, I just want to just give a shout shout out. You know, Joyce Pelham, she is definitely a sweetheart in my life. Beautiful. So, I mean, she's been uh, an encouragement in time. And she's connected me with a lot of people as well. So, um, you know, that's just great. You know, so my advice really is is really, you know, just quickly just network with people. Uh, get out and enjoy life, man. Just so much is out there. Finer things out there to see and explore. I mean, you might wrap up if you, you know what? There's uh, a lot of times as we get older, I say sometimes we get relaxed. We get complacent. Get out there and expand your, your imagination. Right now, I'm writing uh, a dream board. Get you a dream board where you would like to go. I got Belize on my dream board. I've never been to Belize, but Belize is on my dream board. It might not happen Next year might happen a year, but, you know, uh, going to Dubai, write you a dream board, write some different restaurants you'd like to go to. Um, uh, in Dubai, they have a seven star hotel out here. Seven, I didn't only know I know only knew of five stars. There's a seven star hotel. Seven. Yes. Seven in Dubai. So, I mean, there's some awesome places out there. Start 
dreaming. So I start going back to your childhood. If you want to go to the moon, you can go to the moon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Elon Musk and all his people trying to make it possible, you know, to do that. You got to have a million dollars. But anyway, we'll work on that with some stocks and some crypto or whatever we can help you out on. But listen, I'm going to tell you what, just if you can dream it, if you can think it, you can be it. I'm reading a book right now called Self-Sabotage. It's called Actually Stop Self-Sabotage by Judy Hope. And I believe this, Dan, readers are leaders. I don't like to read like I'm not so overwhelmed with reading, but it helps to to balance my life out because sometimes we can sabotage our own self. We can blame nobody. We can blame this, that. When it, when it comes down to it, the answer is you sabotage yourself. You stop yourself. You talk yourself out of that that dream trip you should have taken, that vacation. You make excuses why you shouldn't have do this or why you didn't did that. And in the end of your life, it should have, would have, could have. I wish I had. So live your life with no regrets. You know, enjoy life because life is too short. And if you need anything from me, you know, jamescarpentertravel.com. I'm on facebook.com. I'm on LinkedIn, not too much. I'm going to probably be getting out there, but 386-290-8910, 386-290-8910. That's my real phone number, <laughs> okay? And you can contact me, and, and whatever you're trying to do, you know, if you need some help with anything, I'm there. I love people. I love reaching out. If you're coming this way, if you got some some um, ideas, you want to go somewhere in the States, i got people uh, that I know in, in, in Tennessee, so if you, I got people in Colorado, I got people in Texas, I got people in Vegas, I got people in Indiana, I got people in Illinois, I got people. So depending on where you go, North Carolina, South Carolina, I can maybe link you up with some people and maybe they might even be your tour guide. I don't know. But wherever you're trying to go, you know, whatever you're trying to do, James Carpenter is available for you. If you want to take a dream, a dream trip, a vacation or a staycation, whatever the case is, a short trip, I'm here for you. I want to serve you. I want to help you any way I can. Much peace, much love to everybody out there. Dan Keys, you are King Dan. Well, there you have it, party people. James Carpenter. JamesCarpenterTravel.com is the place you ought to be. That man is, he's not just getting people vacations and even teaching people how to make more money uh, using the money that they have, you know, making investments. Uh, the man has got his hands in different pots. He's networking. He's meeting people. He'll teach you how to meet people, you know. And I think if there's anything you glean from this podcast is be a nice guy, you know, and uh, and take opportunities a- as they come. If somebody asks you to do something and you find it any remotely interesting, y- you, uh, you say yes. I-, I know there was a movie with Jim Carrey called Yes Man, and I think it was based on something else. I think he said yes for a whole year, but even trying to say yes to everything that comes your way for a whole day, you know, maybe a whole, a whole month or a whole week or even a whole day that takes courage. And, and, uh, I mean, my goodness, try it one time, try, try saying yes for the whole day, but don't tell anybody that that's what you're doing for that day. Cause they'll take advantage of you. They really will. Because people suck sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you just say to yourself in the morning, you know, you wake up, smile, laugh a little bit, you know, get yourself in a good mood, meditate if you have to, and, you know, just, and meditate is not just sitting and, and saying, um, you know, meditate can be, you know, just taking a couple minutes and thinking about things, thinking about, yeah, the good things you got. And the, and the goals that you have to, that you have to set, you know, the, and what you want, but, uh, but take one day. And if somebody, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this could be a game you play with yourself and just say yes to everything that comes your way. Yeah. And, uh, you never know. Yeah. I mean, be nice to people. You, you know, you might go on an adventure. You might, you might make money. You might lose money. You, you might, uh, you, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's something I'll do. Try saying yes, uh, because I, I know that there was an opportunity where he could have uh, he could have met up with some people, uh, and and he missed out on on a networking opportunity. James missed out on a networking po- opportunity, and I don't think he's going to make that mistake again. Uh, you know, he he likes people, he likes meeting people, he likes helping people, he likes getting help from people. 
I mean, that's what we're here to do is help each other, right? You take care of yourself. You make sure that you're all taken care of your family, your, your immediate family, your friends, and then you take care of somebody else. You take care of, you know, uh, your community. And if you can go further out than that, do it, do it, take care of people. Oh my goodness. Ah, James Carpenter, you gave me the feels. You made me think of things and I appreciate you. I know that, uh, I hope this is not the last time that we chat. <laughs> James Carpenter, jamescarpentertravel.com. And find him on Facebook too, James Carpenter Travel. Makes it pretty easy. That's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. Now, if you, yes, you would like to tell your story, my loyal listener, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email keysdan at aol.com. That's it for me. It's keysdanradiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.